I caught my wife cheating with a good friend. This was one of the most difficult days of my life. Because this is gonna be discussed, I created a bogus account. My profession needs me to travel on occasion, and I was meant to be out of town for the weekend. I had an important conference in another city many hours away that I needed to attend. It was a Friday evening, and I was driving to the airport to catch my trip. After a couple of hours of waiting, I get a text from my employer stating he's feeling under the weather and would postpone the meeting. This has already made me quite angry. I squandered my whole day and passed on an opportunity to network with influential individuals. As I was driving home, I observed my friend's vehicle parked in the driveway. This was unexpected, so I just assumed he was in the area and decided to pay him a visit. I'd known this man since high school and couldn't picture his betraying me. I glanced around the first level but saw no one, so I walked. Upstairs. I peeked inside the master bedroom after hearing some conversation. I was shocked to see one of my closest friends having sex with my wife. They were both nude and I could see how hung this man was. His penis was considerably longer and heavier than mine. I challenged them immediately and ejected my buddy. I couldn't think of anything to say and my wife continued apologizing. I couldn't figure out why she did it or whether it was her first time cheating. She stated that our relationship had been difficult and that she wanted to date other guys. Our marriage was finished at this time and I filed for divorce within a few days. It's been four months since this occurred and I've fallen into a deep despair. Why did she think it was bad? My height is just a little below normal at 5.25 inches so I didn't anticipate any issues. I've been with 10 different females and no one has ever complained. They usually seem to appreciate it while I'm having it. Is it conceivable she's telling the truth? I can't figure out the truth and it's destroying my self-esteem. I haven't spoken to my buddy since this occurred and I'm still pissed that he stabbed me in the back for no apparent reason. I'm at a loss on what to do to break out of this funk I'm in. Story 2 I 23 male told my mom 45 female I no longer want to be in her life after she got involved with a former friend 18 at the time of mine during my senior year of high school. This was after 5 years of no contact. What comes next? My father died when I was 6 so it's just me and my mother. She was everything to me. We used to do everything as a group. We used to watch Family Guy together when I was 13 years old. I used to tell her about all of my high school crushes. Every time mom returned to work, I would race to the door and offer her a hug and kiss. I used to go to her woman's basketball game and cheer her on. Senior year was a blur. With all of the college applications and other things going on, my mother was getting out more. I was delighted for her. When I departed for college, I didn't want her to be alone. I wish she met someone with whom she could settle down. It was nearing the conclusion of senior year. I received full scholarships to two institutions after being admitted to both. One was a strong neighboring school, while the other was a better rated one nearby. Later in my senior year, there was a rumor that I slept with one of my buddies. Senior year, he changed schools. My friends and I befriended him and we instantly hit it off. I had him over to my place a few times. Bullying ensued as a result of the rumors. I felt embarrassed both at lunch and at the gym. Eventually, it got to me. I snooped through my mother's phone while she was in the shower on a Sunday. I honestly felt like puking. The evidence was there. There are a lot of messages about which hotel room to book and when I won't be there. There were also some obscene messages. I haven't confronted my mother yet. I don't know where I'm going. My grandparents were both out of state. But from then on, I made a lot of judgments. I decided on a school on the other side of the nation. I spent more time with my girlfriend and pals. Then you should remain at home. My mother was pleading with me to spend time with her at one point, but I gave her the typical excuse of being too busy. She had gotten the word that I had a lot on my plate and on my mind. I asked her not to accompany me to assist with the relocation, but she refused. She attempted to hug me farewell, and I gave her a two-second embrace in return. I sobbed uncontrollably when she went. My roommate, who is now the best man at my wedding, asked why I was sobbing, but I told him I couldn't tell him. I emailed her about everything once she arrived. When I say everything, I really mean everything. 
I then banned her phone number. My aunt, two uncles, and both sets of grandparents phoned me within two days. I didn't say anything to them. I just sent them the text I texted my mother. College was a unique experience. I tried all I could to forget about my mother. I focused on my off. I went to parties and became a member of a fraternity. Everyone was curious as to why I had erased all of my social media accounts. I said the same untruth. I found social networking to be both distracting and addictive. People either didn't care enough to poke their noses into my company or just bought it. Some of you may be asking whether my mother attempted to contact me. She did, however, throughout my college years. After two months of my first year of college, she booked a trip. She tried to break into my dorm. Fortunately, we have cards that sign us in. If she doesn't leave, I told them to contact the cops. My paternal grandparents permitted me to spend the summer and winter with them. They also disabled her phone number. She found out about my stay at their house through one of my aunts. Unsurprisingly, she sought to pay me a visit. My grandpa informed her she had to leave his land. My grandmother screamed that she had always felt my father could do better than her and that the only reason she was pleased they were together was so they could have me. I began attending to counseling shortly after graduating from college. My therapist advised me to address my emotions rather than suppress them. So I did the unimaginable and dialed my mother's number. I invited her to pay me a visit at my house. In three weeks, she'll be knocking on my door. I'm not shocked by what I see when it opens the door. Mascara became smudged as a result of tears and inflamed eyes. I turned down her embrace and instructed her to sit. I inquired about her job. I only received one-word responses. I requested that she tell me everything. She revealed everything to me. She told me about how she met my buddy at the grocery store. How they first began messaging one other. After I informed her I knew... She told me she had met him numerous times. I then stated my case. Most of what I mentioned is familiar to me. Here's what I told her. Mom, I know you're more than simply my mother. You're a lady with wants and needs. You deserve to meet someone who makes you happy and wants to spend their lives with you, in my opinion. However, I believe that our connection provided you with some enjoyment. I expected you to preserve it and not dismiss it when it came to seeking happiness. When I was younger, I had a dream. That when I get married, we'll live directly next door to each other. That when you're old enough, you may live with me as Indians do. Even when I moved on, I wanted to share my life with you. I'm not interested in any of it anymore. Mom, not only have I gone on in life, but I've also moved away from you. I believe you should follow suit. She burst into tears and begged pardon. I told her she had to go. It's been two days already. I feel as though a load has been lifted from my spirit. How do I go with this? Story 3. I think my girlfriend is cheating on me. Sorry for not coming up with a more intriguing title, and I realize this is probably too typical of a narrative. I suppose this is more of a plea for assistance. I would never have guessed that my girlfriend of two years could potentially cheat on me. However, I've been spotting red flags that I would not have seen otherwise. I've just recently been aware of it, and I'm curious how long it's been going on. I've observed she spends more time than normal in the restroom getting ready for work. I'm not paying close attention, but it's beginning to become clear. Her hair looks lovely when she walks out of the bathroom, to put it mildly. She works as a quality control expert at a warehouse at a ball bearing company. As a result, the work does not need a formal appearance on the part of its personnel. She also departs for work with a glow on her face. Perhaps I'm overthinking this. I haven't questioned her since there's no evidence that she's cheating, and I don't want to create a scene. It's possible that I'm simply panicking. I'm not sure. I apologize for the long narrative, but I couldn't help but express my worry. Any feedback on this would be much appreciated. Thank you very much.